Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will move by your spirit over Kenya. Move by your spirit over this ground tonight. Let the sick be healed in the name of Jesus. Let the oppressed be healed in the name of Jesus. Let those in bondage be delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let your word come with life. Let your word come with power. We decree and we declare in the name of Jesus that you are lifted in this place tonight. You are lifted over Kenya. You are lifted over the nations of the earth. We vow to give you the glory. And if you are a believer tonight, shout a loud Amen. Shout a loud Amen. Let me request that you walk to 10 people and tell them prepare your heart for a great experience. Prepare your heart for a great experience. Prepare your heart for a great experience. That's number seven, three more. I'm counting. Number eight. Number nine. Prepare your heart for a great experience. Now you return back to your seat shouting, jumping, clapping, rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please, you may be gloriously seated. You may be gloriously seated. Thank you again, Reverend Julian. It's an honor to bring God's word to his people. I count it a profound privilege. Let me thank every man and every woman of God here represented. I honor you in your various capacities. Thank you, um, executives politicians and all who are deserving of honor the lord bless you let me observe all protocol for sake of time we have a lot to do tonight and i trust that god will grant us grace in jesus name god is in a hurry to change someone's life god is in a hurry to bring someone into a very strange season if that person is you can you shout a believing amen tonight amen and amen and amen I like you to be very sensitive tonight and um, from tonight and all through the conference uh, speaker after speaker God has been challenging us God has been building us and this moment will not be less in the name of Jesus Christ Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13 I'm teaching tonight on the force of unity the force of unity in line with your theme the force of unity I want to show you something mysterious about this entity the Bible calls the body of Christ the body of Christ and whilst you are listening I want you to expect that the spirit behind these speakings will rest on you what you are receiving tonight is beyond a lecture is beyond an intelligent communication of thoughts we are ministers of the spirit that means there is the life of God that flows like a river through the frailty of our speakings. And it is that life, that power that energizes you to walk in the reality of the truths that are being taught. Are we together? And I can see as far as my eyes can see, it doesn't matter how far tonight, incredible, the people that are here. It's, it's, a, it's a sign of hunger, genuine hunger. When people hunger after the things of God, he responds. The Bible says, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. You have come tonight, you will not go back disappointed. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13, the Bible tells us when you read the verses before 13, it says that he led captivity captive, the he being God himself, and um, he gave gifts to men. The gifts are not talents, the gifts are men. He gave men to men. Are we together? And then he says, some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And the purpose for which he gave them is found in verse 12. For the perfecting or the maturing of the saints. 
for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ verse 13 till we all come to a state in the spirit called the unity of the faith the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ hallelujah so the Bible tells us very clearly that God desires that as a corporate body we come into the fullness of the measure the stature of the measure of Christ and there are principles that make for the believers wholesome growth the believer does not just become the believer does not just emerge there are spiritual principles that if you follow diligently you will eventually emerge a giant in the spirit now theologically there are four encounters that everybody must have who desires to do business with God you desire to be a man of stature in the spirit there are four principal encounters that you must have let me run through them very quickly I need to lay that as a foundation for you to understand what I'll be discussing tonight four encounters number one is called an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God very simple but profound in order of priority it is important that this begins your series of encounters an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God this is the first encounter that anyone intending to be a believer intending to walk with God must have if you do not encounter Jesus the son of the living God there's no possibility for your salvation not to talk of transformation and your emerging are we together the benefit and, and please listen this is for your knowledge most believers know that salvation is connected to that encounter but they do not even know what they receive at salvation there are three gifts that every man receives at salvation number one is called the forgiveness of sin number one the first gift you receive when you encounter Jesus the son of the living God at salvation is not eternal life it is the forgiveness of sin number two the second gift that you receive is called the nature of righteousness and then the third gift you receive is called the life of God what you call eternal life the way it is called please do not forget this that when you encounter Jesus the son of the living God you have the privilege of accessing these threefold gifts number one the forgiveness of sins and that gives way that you receive afterwards the gift of righteousness and then you receive finally the life of God what you call Zoe John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy then the Bible says but I am come the I being Jesus that ye may have Zoe that life and that you have it more abundantly amplified says to its fullest so this is the first of four cardinal encounters that you must have number two the second encounter that every believer must have if you want to rise in the spirit and become a person of stature and to be relevant as far as God's program is concerned is an encounter with the spirit of the living God. An encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. In as much as the Holy Spirit plays a role in your being saved, there is a separate unique encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit hallelujah and there are a number of blessings that follow that encounter number one when you encounter the Holy Spirit you have the privilege of guidance and direction you have the privilege of empowerment the privilege of guidance and direction when he the spirit of truth is come jesus was teaching he says he will guide you into all truth guide you into all truth hallelujah 
He said, I have many things to tell you. Jesus was speaking to the disciples, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So when you have an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you receive guidance, you receive direction, and then you receive empowerment. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts chapter 10 and verse 33, 38 with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him are you ready for the third the third encounter that you need to have is an encounter with the word of god the word of god not as a person the word of god the logos the thoughts of god the wisdom of god it is called an encounter with the word of God as a compendium of God's wisdom. A compendium of the modus operandi of the kingdom. It's important for you to understand how the kingdom functions. And that the dealings of God and his ways are captured in scripture. When you have an encounter with the word of God. The Bible says in John uh, Matthew 4 and verse 4. That man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Very, very important. An encounter with the word of God. This is where you receive the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. There is such a dimension of wisdom called the hidden wisdom of God. It is also called the wisdom of the just. The Bible says that wisdom has been prepared for the revelation of the glory of God in the saints. Are we together? The hidden wisdom of God ordained for our glory. You will never be able to access the glory of God in experience until you encounter the word of God. So a quick recap. Four encounters. Number one, Jesus the son of the living God. Receiving from that encounter forgiveness of sin, the gift of righteousness, and abundant life. Number two, an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, receiving guidance, direction, and empowerment. Number three, an encounter with the logos of God, the wisdom of God, teaching you the ways of God, showing you the ancient path that leads to your Sabbath. And then number four, many believers have not encountered this fourth dimension. And this is my assignment tonight. Many have encountered Jesus, the son of the living God. Evidently so. Many have encountered the Holy Spirit. Evidently so. Many have encountered the word of God in various dimensions. The last and the final encounter is called an encounter with the body of Christ. Hmm. An encounter with the body of Christ. An encounter with the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 11, please. We're reading from verse 26 to 30. My God. May your eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. Encounter with the body of Christ. So Paul here was speaking about what we call the communion one of the sacraments that Jesus left with the church and Paul was bringing perspective because he found out that they were engaging in the communion unworthily and he needed to bring a theological understanding to their practice and here's what he said as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the Lord's death until he comes verse 17 he leaves a caution he says wherefore Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Next verse. It says, let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. The idea of eating and drinking does not necessarily, is not limited to just eating as you know. Are we together? That the person who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning 
the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. He's speaking here beyond bread. He's speaking here beyond drink. Don't you think he's just talking about those elements? No. This is deeper than that. And that there are consequences when you fail to discern the Lord's body. The consequence is found in verse 30. Please give it to us. For this cause. For this cause. Something happened here. Sit down. For this cause. Not few. Many are weak. The word weak there means limited. Incapacitated. Many are sick. And many sleep. That there is such a tragedy that can befall a man. Befall a people. Because of an offense in the spirit. That in the midst of all the encounters they had. They failed to press in for one encounter. Called encounter with the Lord's body. The body of Christ. And that as a result. Regardless the value of other encounters. You can be limited in life limited in ministry you can be sick and you can die when last did you stand at the grave of someone and they wrote there dead because of the consequence of not discerning the lord's body when last did you see an individual limited and he admitted that the cause of my problem is not just witchcraft and satan that i have failed to discern this mystery called the body of christ Let's join you a bit tonight and trust God to give us understanding. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. I receive. I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorified please be seated let's see how far god can take us this night there are consequences for ignoring the provisions that have been invested within the body of christ there are consequences for ignoring the spiritual investments within the body of Christ. The Bible tells us that those consequences range from limitations in life and destiny to infirmities that plague our bodies and sadly even death. Now, there are two facts that I want you to get as we explore this very delicate subject. Number one, that no single individual, please listen, no single individual can capture and reveal all the dimensions of God without interdependence on the larger body. No individual, no matter how yielded you are, no matter how prayerful you are, no matter how consecrated you are, it is not given to an individual to capture the whole of God as a person. Now, you can experience the whole of God, but it can never be captured in your own experience alone without leaning on the larger body. Are we learning? No individual can capture and reveal all the dimensions of God without interdependence on the larger body. 
the second fact that i want you to know tonight is that there are various dimensions of god that will be needed in your christian experience that may not be captured in your personal experience with god let me take that again there are many dimensions of god that will be needed for the efficiency of your christian experience but will not be captured in your unique experience with god that means when god begins to train an individual he deliberately omits certain experiences that will be needed in your life but that no matter how yielded you are they will not be featured in your personal experience and that that omission is deliberate it will compel you to depend on the provisions that are scattered within the body are we together so no matter how yielded you are within the frame of your dealing within the frame of your experience with god there are certain dimensions of god you will never know from the lens of your experience and that that omission is deliberate so for instance if god is raising you to be an apostle or a prophet chances are excellent within the frame of your training you will never learn anything about excellence you will never learn anything about administration you will never learn anything about finances the scope of your unique training will not feature these things however the deficiency of them will tell on your life in the future that that omission is deliberate so when god begins to build a people he concentrates on the core areas that represent their grace and represent the dimensions of him they will serve to the nations the dimensions he reveals to them is not all that they will need in their life now here's where the problem is because obedience produces excellence you will find out that when you stay in the place of your training with god there are certain areas of your life that will excel because you stayed there to learn but the shocking thing is as you progress you will see that on the one hand you are excelling as far as the areas god trained you in are concerned but you will be failing in other areas and when you go back to god and say why this mix of success and failure he will tell you the remedy to this condition is that you must encounter the body of Christ are we together that the body of Christ has deposited within it other dimensions of God and other graces that are supposed to complement for the areas that were not captured in your training so if God is raising you to be a businessman most likely you will not learn through your unique training the dynamics of prayer and warfare it may not be there you will encounter the wisdom of god you will learn the principles of influence the principles of excellence leadership administration and you will find out that using those tools you have been given you will become an excellent leader except that when the devil now begins to attack you the bankruptcy of other sides of god that are deficient in your training can bring you down and the reason why god omits that is because someone else at another side if you're understanding me say amen, amen. please help those under the anointing but pay attention this is very important so what we have in the body of christ is that we have a lot of emotional connection to our trainings and how God trained us are we together now he's trained us in a certain way and because of lack of or poor mentorship many believers do not know that the tools that they will need for their wholesome victory is beyond the scope of that which God uniquely trained them in so they step into ministry or step into life knowing only the tools that were revealed in their personal place of training and find out that life seems to happen for them in a very bad way 
For instance, a man of God can be greatly anointed, learn the principles of consecration, and yet be broke, not understand the principles of influence. And when you look at that man, he's not a perfect portrait of the bride of Christ. And you'll be wondering what happened. The man sometimes may ignore the area of finances because it was not captured in his training. And I'm telling you that when God does not introduce a curriculum in your training, it does not mean you do not need it. It's because there is another person within the body of Christ who has been trained in that area. That person will be an extension of that lecture to you. But that if you fail to appreciate the investment of God that is scattered across various vessels in the body, there will be consequences. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. <laughs> For this cause, many sleep. So when God is training you, you may not learn from that training the principles of longevity and impact because the kind of consecration it takes to dig into God and fish out those answers, it may distract what he's building you to become. Are we together now? Now look up please. Let me use examples that Reverend Julian gave here. How many of you know, as much as I know, that even though Reverend Julian is into real estate and so on and so forth, he may not necessarily be into construction of zincs, constructions of plumbing materials, but the house that he builds will need those provisions. And he does not need to bother because someone else has that as a specialty but if a building is going to be built it will need more than just being a real estate person you will need to bring in all these machineries are we together now imagine with me an individual who intends to build a house and the only thing he knows is to make bricks and mortar and he ignores the plumber ignores the zinc person ignores the electrician ignores the interior person Tell me what kind of house that will be. I hope that house is not you. Because there are many believers who desire to be an excellent portrait of what the bride of Christ is. But they do not know that beyond the scope of their training, there are many other things to learn. Please listen. There are many other things to learn. Many other things to learn. I like the way the Bible puts it. Jesus walked with his disciples for about three and a half years. And he taught them diligently. But Jesus made a very serious admission. He said, I still have other things to teach you. That means my curriculum is not all you will need to be apostles. You can't be called apostles just by listening to all I've taught you alone. There are other things that need to be added. Are we together now? He said, you cannot bear them now. How be it? Receive what I'm giving you, but have in mind that the lecture continues. Are we together? Now, imagine the entire Bible having only the Gospels. There is a side of God you will never know. You will never know we are seated with Christ. Jesus never taught that. You would never understand the warfare of the believer. Jesus did not teach that. It was this strange man called Paul who came to bring the other things Jesus said would be taught. Are we together now? That the epistles began to give us perspectives on the believer's work, bringing frame to our Christian experience. It was Paul that taught on the gift of the Spirit. Jesus never taught on the gift of the Spirit. It was Paul that gave definition to certain Christian experiences. So when you talk about the Bible, even though Jesus is the word, the logos of God, you will still bring all of these dimensions together for the wholesome growth and development of the believer. Do you understand me so far? And now I'm teaching you that you imagine that the apostles only knew the writings of Jesus. They ignored the teachings of Paul, ignored the teachings of other believers. They would be lopsided people. Are we together now? They had to embrace other dimensions to make them wholesome. This is what is lacking within the body of Christ. 
So there are people with different pieces of God. Now look up please. When Jesus was having the last supper as we call it, the Bible tells us that he had said he was the bread and he broke himself into different dimensions. It was not bread, he was breaking. It was a revelation he was showing. He broke himself to various dimensions and gave the apostles. Not one of them had the whole bread. Are we together? And that if you want to see the complete bread, then you have to accept the contribution of everyone who is a holder of that peace. That as great as Peter is, Peter cannot represent, no matter how large his portion is, it cannot equal the entire bread. Not John, not Luke, not Mark. So if you want to see that whole bread, you will have to see what John is bringing plus Peter. Are we together now? Yes. Now, just because you saw Peter holding a very generous, um, a very generous part of the bread does not mean that that's all the bread. The challenge with the body of Christ is because of the excellency of our unique contributions. Sometimes we become beguiled by our level of individual efficiencies to mean without any contribution, my portion of bread is still equal to the whole, but it is not true. The best that anyone can be in this body is an effective member. An effective member. No one person equals the entire revelation of Jesus as an individual. Is someone learning now? So watch this. Jesus appears to Paul on his way to Damascus. And having encountered Jesus himself, the logos of God, you would think that Paul should not need any man. Why would you need any other man after encountering Jesus? But Jesus himself told him, go to the house of Judah and wait there. I will still send somebody to come and continue that dealing. As much as he encountered Jesus, Jesus never got him filled with the Holy Ghost. How do you encounter Jesus and instead of your eyes opening, you become blind? I thought when men meet Jesus, their eyes become open. But here is a man meeting Jesus and leaving his presence blind. And he says, not to worry. There's something I want to show you. Someone in my name, but not me directly, will come and open your eyes. And if you receive that man, you will receive the opening of eyes. Are we together now? If Paul rejected Ananias and said, I've met Jesus already, he would be a blind apostle and he will misrepresent God. You would think it was God's intention to leave Paul blind. But his healing was not even in the encounter. He encountered Jesus. Jesus said, you encountered me. You cannot kick against the pricks. Yet, his eyes were still blind. And an ordinary brother, but a member of that body. An ordinary brother, not apostle Ananias, not prophet Ananias, but an effective member of the body, still holding a piece of that bed. He said, Brother Saul, Jesus whom you met had sent me that I should open your eyes and that you be filled with the Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Naaman, I know you are a great captain, but your intelligence does not capture within its experience how to be healed from leprosy. Be mindful of who you are pushing away because someone in your house holds the key. The Bible says one day the slave girl says, sir, don't be offended. I know you are a great man. You have revelation, but there's something I see in your life. You are still deficient. But that provision is within the body. You are a great man of God. But you are struggling financially. This is not the will of God. I, I don't undermine your anointing. But there is a provision in the body you have ignored. And for this cause, many are weak. Many are sick. And many 
even die. Hallelujah. I know you are praying and fasting, but do you know there is somebody who has done business with God by covenant and has become an embodiment of the healing anointing? You can pray and fast in your room alone, but if you do not realize that there are certain things that are not captured within my unique experience, but needed as part of the tools in my destiny, it is scattered within this mystery entity called the body of Christ. The grace for speed, the body of Christ. There are people who carry unique and strange graces. They, they through their pain, they cry to the God of heaven and he showed them a dimension of his power. They are an embodiment of God's favor. They go to any land and the gates open and you can be around them and still suffer. And heaven tells you this is not God's best. Your unique experience does not capture favor. But favor is needed in your life if you must give an expression of a wholesome believer. Is someone learning? An encounter with the body of Christ. Now, the danger is this. Because you have obvious results in one area, it may beguile you to think that the areas that are deficient in your life will cover up by themselves. No, sir. No, sir. I wonder that Jesus, the Son of the living God, had to be prayed for by Anna the prophetess and Simeon the prophet. What for? The word was made flesh. Did not have the seed of seed, or, I mean the seed of sin within him. And yet when he arrived, not even Jesus could excel. They took him to the temple and a woman held him, blessed him. A man held him, blessed him. And when he met John, John said, Behold the Lamb. He would have said, John, I'm here now. Get out of the way. He said, No, suffice to be so. I can't ignore your ministry. Even though I am the Savior, you will need me for your own salvation. But as far as my becoming is concerned, if I ignore the grace that is upon you, not even me will be immune from this consequence of weakness, sickness, and death. Number two, the Bible tells us that there were certain women who supported Jesus in ministry. Now I don't understand this. How does someone multiply bread in one moment and still be needing partners? If I have the ability to multiply bread and feed many people, would I need any partner? Yet the Bible is vocal as to the fact that there were people who came and supported him and he did not turn away their ministry. When Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, bleeding from all the lacerations he had received, the Bible tells us that he collapsed on the ground. Your Bible fell with his cross. And you would think because you were savior, he would say, no man, don't participate in this. He was so weak. They called someone called Simon of Cyrene. Help him carry the cross and Jesus did not refuse. He said, please, I, this is the much needed help. Because if Jesus died on the ground, he would not be called sin. He needed to, be, to, to die on the cross to be called a curse. If he died on the ground, he could not be a curse. Cursed is he that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham justification by faith might come upon we the Gentiles to the end that we receive the promise of the spirit through faith is someone learning now so you can have visions of yourself doing great things and yet you find out that those engracings that are responsible for those dimensions you see in your dream and your vision were not within the frame of your unique training here is where my teaching lies tonight do you have the flexibility to understand that it may not be in my life 
but if it is within the body of Christ then I can access it if speed is not in my life but it is within the body of Christ I can access it if strength supernatural strength is not at work in my life but it is within the body of Christ I can access it are we together now this is very powerful many believers do not understand this dynamic now let me show you something very quickly if God is speaking to you shout amen, amen. in Matthew chapter 12 open our eyes oh God verse 22 Matthew 12 22 someone is learning the Bible says Jesus these men were brought to Jesus and he opened up their eyes and they saw and miracles happened. Look up, please. Great miracles happened. Verse 23. The Bible says all the people were amazed. And they said, is this not the son of David? Next verse. But when the Pharisees heard it, the Bible says they said, this man cast out devils. I agree. But by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Here comes a revelation. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, <laughs> he said unto them, there is a law in the spirit that every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Listen carefully. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Every kingdom divided against itself comes to desolation every city or house divided against itself shall not stand do you understand that next verse and if satan cast out satan he is divided against himself how shall then his kingdom stand next verse and if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judges then he delves into a very interesting discussion 29 he said how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man look up please so what makes the man strong is not physical strength what made the man strong was that his house was united Jesus is teaching here that the way you scatter things is to bring division that every time a house any house is divided it cannot stand then he says when you come into a strong man's house the only way to spoil that man is to do something give us that scripture To bind the strong man and then spoil his house. Do you know how you bind the strong man? You bind the strong man by creating a system within the house that brings division. The moment there is division, the man is no longer strong. His strength in this context is his ability to be an undivided kingdom, an undivided city, an undivided house. Who is following so far? that an undivided kingdom is called strength in the spirit a man is strong not just because of his formulas and his policies that for whatever reason he's been able to put his house to be of one heart and of one mind and that if you come into such a system the way you take away strength is to take away unity genesis chapter 11 the Bible talks about a man called Nimrod, the son of Cush. That he came to a land called China. And they wanted to build and build a building that gets to the heavens. And the Bible says they all agreed. There was no conflict. They were of one mind. We will do this. And then the Bible tells us that verse 5 now. The Lord came down. It was a serious issue the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the men had built in the realm of the spirit a building had already risen 
even though they had not started their unity was that much strong that you could see it from the realm of the spirit that this project was done verse 6 and the Lord said behold this is the secret of their strength the people is one the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained church of the Lord Jesus Christ hear this nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined as a united force to do and the way God destroyed that project is that he confounded their language so that there was no more basis for agreement and unity based on what the Bible reveals here and the Bible tells us that that was the end of that project nobody fought them no swords are we together now but the moment there was division the project died let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen unity is powerful primarily because of the unique spiritual investments that come from everybody that make up that team there is a dimension of God's grace that you can never see until a people become united in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were together in one accord. In one accord. The Holy Ghost seemed to be restrained from coming until he found this state. One accord. And the Bible tells us that when he came, verse 4, everybody within that room benefited from his coming. One accord. Are we together now one accord benefited the spirit gave all of them utterance there are many believers today you have not become strong men you know when we say strong men we, we mean it today to mean a demonic entity no no when Jesus was talking about strength and kingdoms he was saying it with respect to unity I wish we had time would have gone to John 17 and you read the prayer of Jesus that is the real Lord's prayer and he emphasized unity he says as I and the father are one he prayed a prayer for the church he said that they may be one there is a kind of glory the world needs to see but that that only happens when the church becomes one do you know why because there are several investments of the spirit captured within your life that are not within the frame of my training with God but are needed in my life you may have heard me say that I am a product of many anointings. It is true. I have met Jesus. I've encountered the realm of the spirit many times. But you would think in spite of my, my encounters should negate leaning to receive from the investment in the body. I am a beneficiary of the ministry of the body. The ministry of the body someone can carry the spirit of excellence while your organization is drowning in, med in mediocrity once you discern that there is such an investment of grace your bailout has come else you can be a child of god and yet never experience the more in god because you close your heart towards the ministry of the body who is learning tonight do you know that as we're gathered here tonight we are receiving both vertically and horizontally. You are not just receiving from Joshua Selman alone. You will be surprised that while you are seated, God uniquely placed you there because there is a grace you've been crying for that God deposited in someone you may not know. And whilst he's sitting close to you, proximity creates infection. We know this. You can be infected. I don't want to, to catch COVID but from a human standpoint, you stand close to someone who has COVID. It doesn't matter whether you believe in COVID or not. Except you are operating by a higher law. Sometimes you do not even know you are infected with a flu. You still feel normal. Give yourself a few days. The implication of your proximity tells on your health. So whilst you are seated here right now, you will be surprised at what spirit transactions are happening you came here a prayerless person 
but you are sitting by a humble but powerful prayer warrior who has such an investment of grace and whilst you are receiving there is a sharing of the spirit this is what is called koinonia it's not just limited to you and the holy spirit there is a participation a drinking from the same cup any believer who comes to a meeting like this and lives the same you were cheated on two grounds one you didn't receive from god two you did not receive from the body is it in your bible that this body thing is so powerful that the bible says where two or three not one not one i am in you when you are one but where two or three are gathered provided it is in my name Do you believe what you're hearing tonight? Please sit down. It is amazing how cheap your efficiency and your progress in the spirit can become when you understand the vast distribution of graces that are scattered across the body of Christ. And you see, graces are like addresses. You can know where they came from. Yes, sir. You can know that this one that you are carrying this grace for influence it came from somewhere i remember seeing the man dr miles munro and the huge investment of god's grace territorially he was an advisor to governments even though he was a man of god once you see consistency then it means that result is supported by a grace once you see consistency you go to this nation, the results are the same. You go to this community in Kenya, every government that comes blesses Daniel. It means there is a spirit in him. Are we together now? I'm showing you how it works in the spirit. And it is your assignment that in addition to all these three encounters, Jesus for your salvation, the Holy Spirit for your empowerment, the word of God imparting his wisdom, you must know that even in the midst of that there are still dimensions that are not captured in your experience and if you have the discernment to see what God is doing through another life through another ministry the healing anointing may not be in your ministry but it's in the body of Christ whether you walk in it or not there are times you will go to God and cry and God will refer you back to the place within the body that he deposited that grace i'm going to show you how to receive from the body and then we pray is someone learning because many of you are going to carry graces tonight that there, there are certain there are graces you did not come to this place with but by this teaching you will be surprised you will walk out of this place and my god resources ah. I read the story of the ordination of Saul and Samuel made a very fearful statement sir he said is it not because God has anointed you not to be king to be captain over his inheritance there is a status like that a captain over God's inheritance this is beyond being a king Saul was beyond a king he was a captain over God's inheritance. Do you know that he never saw a vision that he should go and meet Samuel? Whether he met Samuel or not was his concern. He chose as an act of his will. Why suffer and keep going around looking for a donkey? I know there is a way restoration can happen. It is not within our experience. Let's go to a man who carries this grace let's stop wasting our time and the bible says as soon as they met samuel look how samuel trivialized their problems these guys had been three days going around and samuel said leave the matter of donkeys that is not why you came go up and i will tell you what is in your heart you see every mountain is relative to the grace that confronts it what you call a mountain is relative to the grace at work in your life or absent in your life 
there are graces that have been ordained within the body to trivialize mountains they will move through it like the mountain god i can leap over walls so if your wall refuses to shift and you don't have the ability to jump over it don't blame the mountain blame your absence of not accessing the graces distributed within the body provided that possibility has happened to someone the same lord is rich unto all in all honesty and i don't mean to embarrass you if your church is not growing rather than saying okay i'm sure that it's just a unique thing god is doing with me it's a lie it's a flimsy excuse there is the grace for increase truly genuinely there is but it is within the body it may not be captured within your experience but it is within the body and your assignment is to search with humility in the parable of the ten virgins sir the bible says that they were all virgins at the beginning of the story we did not know anything like foolishness and wisdom we just know that they were all virgins but the delay of the bridegroom separated them into wise and foolish if the bridegroom came early all of them will be called virgins but because the bridegroom delayed the extra factors that they carried began to reveal themselves if life and time does not test you you will all be called ministers of the gospel but once there is an economic challenge once there is an attack it begins to reveal what you carried extra who is learning that there are things now god is saying get from your brother in the faith get from your sister in the faith you will not need it now the bridegroom has not delayed yet so you will not see the value of extra oil extra wisdom extra counsel extra relationships god has not yet asked you to go international in your ministry you will not see the value of having diplomats as part of your team but when the bridegroom delayed the bible says for some depletion began to happen are we together now and when that happened they became foolish and they went to the ones who were wise and said please help us they said we're sorry we carried enough just for ourselves however let me give you an advice it says go to them that sell that means it is not within your space but it is still available there are some people called them that sell and buy for yourselves apostle i i love the lord but there's something about lack of prayer the person who mentored me did not carry that grace for prayer and so now i love the lord but i struggle in the place of prayer there is a provision within the body that can remedy that deficiency if you have the humility to discern you can contact genuine prayer fire and even though your background did not give you that opportunity you can outsource help within the body are we together apostle i came from a very modest evangelical background i didn't have access to the spirit of revelation but it is available within the body and if you know how to access it you can draw to your space possibilities that were not in your history are we together apostle god showed me what reverend julian is doing now and he said this is what i'll be doing across the nations i agree with you but that vision may never come to the light of day because you have not accessed the graces responsible for this kind of results so for every preacher that has mounted this pulpit for every preacher that will mount this pulpit, for every man of God here represented, for every businessman here, anyone doing anything consistent in the kingdom is because there is a grace that has defined their results. And that that grace is available for reception, not under every condition. Please sit down.
Is someone learning? Someone shout, he said, there is a way out. Yes, sir. I've not been able to get land. There is a way out. My brother, you are struggling because you have ignored the body of Christ. There is a way out. Someone within the body has done business with God in deep waters and has accessed that grace. Why reinvent the wheel when the grace is already available? Apostle, my son has been so sick. We came from a family that we, we've been plagued by all kinds of witchcraft. I tell you, it's because you still want to remain in that situation. Someone used his own pain to search and they have found God as the Lord of Sabaoth. They have found the deliverer through their pain and they can serve you with the grace that is a testament of their own story. I was watching the videos of Maurice Cerullo, T.L. Osborne, and all these men crying to God recently and saying, my God, what have we missed as a generation? What did these people get? Thank God for the healings we're seeing, but there is something we've not touched yet. We missed something. And admission is the first key. Once you admit that it can be, but it's not yet, there is something. They laid hold on eternal life. It was evident. These guys would go to nations and shake it upside down. They would dare to call the sick to come out. Bring a blind person out. Bring a crippled person out. For most preachers, you try that today. And that could be the end of your ministry. No. Our confidence has been dampened. Because there is a substance of reality that we are yet to hold on to. And I'm telling you that these graces are available. Embedded in this mystery called the body of Christ. The body of Christ is beyond a gathering of people. It's a convergence of spiritual experiences. It's a convergence of graces. It's a convergence of covenants with God. For the sharing of everyone. You may have heard me say it, but let me repeat it here again. That every name you see in the Bible is not only the name and the story of a person that every name in the bible is a description of a spiritual pathway that produces a certain kind of believer so when you say abraham abraham is not just a person abraham is a compendium of an experience with god that can make a man become a commander over god's inheritance when you want to become such a man the name of that experience is abraham Esther is not just the name of a woman. Esther is the compendium of a story. A journey with a grace in that story. How ordinary men rise to positions of notoriety and bring victory without using a sword. The name of that journey is called Esther. Gideon is the name of a spiritual pathway. Elijah is the name of a pathway. Joseph is the name of a pathway let me tell you how you know the holy ghost is the one training you you will find a parallel of your training there must be a name in the bible that your experience must look like eventually in the course of that training you will see joseph imagine it is not the person joseph it is the experience joseph rejected by his brothers went down on account of his integrity I see Joseph forming there. I can use scripture to tell you, not predict, not prophesy. Tell you with precision, by wisdom, that this is your end. Victory and glory and honor is what is waiting for you. Even in a strange land. Because I see from your experience that this is a journey called Joseph. So if you tell me about Potiphar's wife, I tell you, forget about that. I already see the end of your journey because the things that are written are for time. They are written for our learning that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. You believe that? Shout amen. Please sit down. We're about to pray shortly. I'm saying this to you because for some of you, you came here and you've been asking God to give you a definition of this thing you are doing with him it seems to have no name I'm giving you a name the name of this thing you've been doing with God is called Esther for some it is called Ruth for some it is called Deborah 
for some it is called Elijah for some it is called Peter I know you had an encounter you who once hated church I see Paul forming there I see I see an apostle rising from the ashes of those experiences to receiving from the body of Christ I need to give you this and then we'll pray I'm seeing a river this is what I'm seeing in my vision I'm seeing a river flowing let the fire fall let the river flow let it burn inside let it flow outside let the fire fall and let the river flow let it burn inside let it flow outside let the fire fall let the river flow let it burn inside let it flow outside let the fire fall let the river flow let it burn inside let it flow outside one more time let the fire fall let the river flow let it burn inside let it flow outside one more time let the fire fall let the river flow let it burn inside we're about to pray can you please sit down let's hear what the spirit of god has to say there are two keys to receiving from this mystery entity called the body please lend me your attention now I sense a healing anointing very strong healing anointing just moving over this place so whilst you are listening if you are sick in your body I want you to open up your heart something is happening in this place right now as I raised that song I began to sense by the impulse of the spirit a strong healing anointing just just flowing like a river the Bible says the river that flowed from that city was for the healing of the nations. Let the fire fall. Let the river flow. Let it burn inside. Let it flow outside. Let the fire fall. And let the river flow. Let it burn inside. Ah. Let the fire fall, let the river flow, let it burn inside, let it go outside. Hallelujah. Now listen, the first key to receiving from the body of Christ is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. Lend me your attention. This is the first key to receiving from the body of Christ but we have this treasure Kenya in Kenya we have this treasure in East Africa we have this treasure but there is a problem hold on hold on don't rush there is a problem the problem is where the treasure is found the treasure is found in ethin and this is a serious problem the fact that the vessel is ethin i wonder why god would put such treasure in ethin vessels i thought that such a treasure like the investment of the spirit 
should be found in some kind of glorious vessel. But out of all the vessels available, God decided to use an earthen vessel called a man of God, an earthen vessel called a Kenyan, and invested this treasure. The Bible says that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. Who is learning now? You have to be aware that the treasure is real, but it is hidden in earthen vessels. Do you know what that means? Sometimes the vessels that are carrying it may not even be whole. It's like clay. Have you seen a clay pot? Sometimes you see cracks around the edges, but there is still treasure inside. That means be aware that the vessels that host these graces are human. They are limited. They are men. And their imperfections will tell at various stages. Is someone learning now? The first law of receiving from the body is to take away this obsession for godlike perfection. It is not a journey to endorse licentiousness, but for as long as you are looking for perfect vessels, you will die with the treasure close to you and never access it. The treasures are in earthen vessels, earthen vessels, earthen vessels, earthen vessels. Judges chapter 14. Let's hurry up. Judges 14. I'll start my reading from verse 1. Samson, the Bible says he went down to Timnah and saw a woman there, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Wonder what took him there. That's for another day. But the Bible says he went down there. Are we together? And the Bible says, verse 2, he came and told his father and mother, I've seen a woman, the daughter of the Philistines, go and get her for me to wife. Verse 3. The Bible says, the parents said, is this, is there nobody somewhere? Where are you? Why are you going to uncircumcised Philistines? But the story that represents my emphasis is from verse 4 now. Give it to us, please. The Bible says, God was orchestrating that so that there will be an occasion to end something. Are we together now? Verse 5. When Samson went down, he was on his way. The Bible says, Behold, a young lion roared against him. Verse 6 now. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. Watch this story. And the Bible says he would rent as he would have rent a kid. He had nothing in his hand, but he did not tell his father and mother what he did. Watch this now. So Samson is on his way to go and visit this lady. And a lion came out. And the Bible says he, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. He held the lion and tore the lion with his bare hands and kept quiet. The Bible says he went down, he talked with the woman and then he returned. Verse 8, let's hurry. After the time he returned to take the lady, the Bible says he saw a mystery that the lion he had killed had become a carcass. Everybody say carcass. You know what a carcass is? Rotten flesh. But the Bible says he saw something else there. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Now, I do not understand. I'm not, uh, I don't know. Those who study bees are called what? Whatever they are called. We know there are people like that. Are we together? So, do you know how smelly a carcass is? And of all the places bees can deposit their honey, they have lush green trees. But they left those trees and they went inside a carcass and deposited honey within the carcass. And the Bible tells us, verse 9, that he took thereof, he reached into the carcass and took honey there and he went on eating the honey and he came to his father, his mother and he gave them and they did not eat and they ate but he did not tell them where he had taken the honey from. That that honey you are enjoying now. 
that grace for speed you are enjoying now it was from a pastor who has temper but still anointed the man can be angry but i know that beyond the anger there is still an anointing there i endured the anger to have taken the carcass now you are enjoying the grace for speed i may not tell you the story that brought it but out of something strong in fact out of something rotten has come something sweet please sit down the first key to receiving from the body is to realize that the treasure is in earthen vessels I always see this man in my dreams and I see him imparting grace upon me but the man insults everybody now that's not the best of a Christian portrait and whoever that man is we pray that he will grow but for the time being Elisha if it is a double portion to one endure the anger of this temperous but heavily anointed prophet called Elijah Do you know what it means to walk with Elijah? At his anger, he called down fire on 50 people, then 50 others. The third says, no, no, we were sent. It's not, I mean, if we're not sent, we have no business coming to you. And now you are walking with such a man. What will happen to you the day you annoy him? And yet Elisha endured. I understand that the sons of the prophet were justifiably offended. It seemed to me like they were offended. God is coming to take your mentor and your father. Let him even go so we'll rest. What a temperous man. And yet Elisha will be there. Don't make me angry. I'm sorry, sir. And you are wondering, are you such a foolish man? He knows that even though the vessel is earthy, there is still treasure within it. Are we together now? It is amazing how that believers think that just because an individual is anointed it means that the person may be with flawless with godlike perfection now please do not get me wrong I'm not endorsing licentiousness and carelessness not at all not ever but I'm telling you that the reality of these vessels is that proximity reveals flaws the closer you come to these vessels and you see their humanity one day the man will shout at his wife in your presence and you will compare the one who took somebody out of a wheelchair to this one who is saying why are you doing this and yet you are supposed to keep quiet and still honor the person that is the law that governs receiving from the body of Christ many people cannot receive from Christ they think do you know even if Jesus walked upon the earth, there are people who will not receive from him. A man who wakes up one morning and rolls a whip in a temple and begins to flog everyone. Why didn't he report to the authorities of the day? He flogged the people and overturned the tables. The next moment you are seeing him with a woman alone at the well. The next moment he enters the house of Zacchaeus and for hours he's the only one inside the house and then he comes out and says nothing happened come on Jesus what is going on here um, this my walk with you is revealing too many things then you're on the way going to the other side and he's sleeping yet he's supposed to be the epitome of compassion and there's a storm of wind and he does not wake up and the disciples were angry they said care us not that that we perish and he got up and called their lamentation unbelief now you imagine such a man that's the Jesus you love that you roll on the ground for now I'm, I hope you are not misunderstanding me I'm teaching you something here apostle I wish you know the kind of pastor I have if he's ungodly leave i'm not talking about ungodliness i'm talking about people with a genuine passion for god who are just sincerely human did you hear what i said don't endorse nonsense and say joshua selman said just endure no there are there are there are evils to depart on from day one run away immediately 
but I have found this to be a great key I have received from various kinds of graces I remember one time many years ago I wanted to see you know, just an old man that I used to know and it took a long time I had to stay and wait a, a bit and you would easily be offended but then the man came and he prayed for and it was just a seed I wanted to give him and he came out and prayed a very simple prayer but I made up my mind that I would not be offended he was carrying a grace I was looking for and I humbled myself to receive there are many people who want to receive graces at their terms don't keep me waiting I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere unfortunately it does not happen that way pastors as much as possible let's make it easy for people don't create unnecessary difficulty however let me tell you dear people when you see your pastor angry frustrated pray for him don't conclude that the anointing has stopped because you saw his humanity when the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness one laughed and he called the brothers he said come and see the nakedness but the other one came with a wrapper went backwards and covered it and even though Noah was naked but when he woke up he knew who looked at him and he cursed the person the man may be angry and God is still working on his character but as for the anointing he's still there and if you can endure one day he will call you maybe your sponsor let me talk about another area your sponsor is a businessman but he's a disorganized person he can be careless he can throw his paper in this car a file in another car and blame you for it and yet when you want to run God says stay there that is where the anointing of your rising is you have endured insults that have nothing to do with you and when you pray God remains silent meaning stay there at my last instruction one day in the midst of that uncomfortable situation the man can call you and say do you know why things work for me even though I'm an angry man it's a weakness God is helping me work on but I want to introduce you to my network of relationships that becomes the one encounter that changes your life receiving from the body of Christ demands an awareness that the vessels are earthen I hate to tell you this but there are people who when they stand on stage to preach it is very possible that as a man of God half of the stories you bring are lies I pray God will help us but sometimes it's just the way it is preachers for you just like politicians too let me balance it you know politicians sometimes they can stand and say all kinds of things and uh, tell a story somewhere tell another version of it and you say was that not the story you said somewhere but you forgot one part there and you know and all of that and yet God sees all these things and acts like he's not seeing them this is the thing about God that makes me wonder you would think because you are angry with the vessel he should remove the grace and he ignores you and your anger and keeps using the grace he does not endorse that state but that is how far his mercy can go hmm. are we learning the first key to receiving from the body of Christ is to understand that the vessels are earthen they can be weak but provided they are sincere towards God they have that grace and it is accessible if you can endure number two the second key to receiving from the body of Christ I wrote here look for and focus on Jesus look for and focus on Jesus you go to a church if you look for tribalism you'll find it there if you look for sentiments you will find it there if you look for Jesus you will find him there in fact quite honestly if you look for Satan I hope you don't find him there but there may be one nasty member of that church who will refuse to leave but to keep causing trouble all there and yet the Bible calls the house a great house and acts as if all the vessels are gold he tells you some vessels are gold some vessels are silver some are wood some are clay yet he calls the house a great house the house is great not because of the vessels the house is great because of the builder so the second key focus on Jesus 
when you focus on finding Jesus you can endure anything that is not him and find him revelations 1 from verse 12 and I turned to see the voice that spoke with me and when I turned the first thing I saw were seven golden sticks or seven lampstands and the Bible tells us at the end of that scripture that the lampstands represent the church in the midst I like this of the candlestick was one like the son of man in the midst of that church they don't know so much about finances but in the midst of that limitation if you choose to see Jesus you will find Jesus if you want politics you will still find it in that church I know there's tribalism I know there's politics I know there's sentiments but can you look away from it and see Jesus I know that the man of God rambles a lot when he's preaching but can you take away all the things and whether true or untrue and just focus on the sincerity uh, Paul said I think it's first Corinthians 2 2 I, I hope I got that right um, he said that I desire to know nothing among you yes first Corinthians 2 2 I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified do you know that it looks like there's a lot of tribalism in this church I, I, I've seen it but since God brought me here I take away my mind and I refuse to see the pastor as an evil man he loves God maybe it was his mentorship that made him to get into some of these tribalistic things but I look beyond it and I focus can you look beyond the weaknesses can you look beyond all the human sentiments and see Jesus this is the key to receiving now let me tell you this there are many people today and I'm saying this with all due respect and Africa we must learn I know that there's a lot of decline in godliness and so on happening within the West America Europe but be careful there are still people there that have the fire and God is still doing business with great people sometimes we need to be careful the average believer looks at America and looks at Europe as if it's a place that is just a a, a, a gathering of demons I have met powerful people powerful people who are preservers of the move of God across these lands are we together don't generalize and don't conclude there are people who still fear God there are still people who have not bowed to the prophets of Baal the same way many people look at every pastor and just generalize and believe everybody is a sorcerer everybody is a 419 a con person no 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 don't allow your pain stretch too far and make you see that everyone is a devil there are still people who have not bowed to Baal there are still people holding on to integrity and a pure conscience as they serve God are we together now yes not everybody who prophesies got his power from the water or, or, or wherever no don't demean people's sacrifices a man flogged it out with God with prayer and fasting and just because it's too spectacular for your understanding you gen no don't, don't do that don't see God lifting a man and believe that he bowed to something somewhere you need to give yourself a new orientation I know that there are many things around the body of Christ sad stories but God is still in the midst of his bride healing building purifying correcting he's not like the priest that will leave the man half dead He's not like the Levite that will leave the man half dead. When he comes as that Samaritan, he says, although you are wounded, I will treat you. I will walk on you. There are many churches today that have made mistakes, maybe character, maybe whatever it is. And from their hearts, they truly love God. Don't conclude. God is still walking. Out of the ashes of the dealings, the prunings, you will see mighty vessels that will still rise. Are we together now? There are many young people. You may see the young people. I know that they are all, you know, pride and all of that. But don't conclude. Just because they are arrogant does not mean they are not anointed. God will prune them and cut away that thing. The tiredness of ministry itself will prune them. Just leave them. Let them keep going. By the time you preach all the sermons you have to preach, one day by yourself you will say, God, I need you. 
then he now says now follow those who have done this for 30 years there is a skill to remaining can you endure the carcass you know how smelly a carcass is and yet you reach down to it to bring out honey There are some of you who are not used to a service beyond 30 minutes. I know and I respect it. But some God is stretching you here at Rema Fest. You are tired but God is saying just stay. Can you endure the carcass for want of word? Because somewhere in the course of this, I mean who has two preachers in a service? I mean just one and very quickly, one scripture, one admonishment. Let's share the grace. Be on your way. And here you are seated from morning to afternoon just when you're about to rest something comes in again now God is bringing another dose but then in the midst of everything if you can endure the hand of God rests upon you and then you can tell the nations that I had to bend over backwards but he still came came ladies and gentlemen if you know how to encounter the body of Christ, you will be a compendium of strange graces. Strange graces. The fire for prayer. The grace for revelation. The grace for favor. The grace for speed. The grace for influence. And when God polishes you like a trophy, he will now introduce you to your world and they will say what species of a believer is this you will tell them he's one who has encountered Jesus the son of the living God one who has encountered the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit one who has encountered the wisdom of God through his word and in addition one who has encountered the body of Christ there are graces in your nation I've told you this countless times I've studied a bit about the story of the move of God in Kenya it is amazing the kind of people that God brought forth from this land connecting to other African nations yes but mighty moves some of you who are even used by God here you've not studied the history of the move of God within your land and there are people who carry this like an Olympic fire and do you know that some of those graces are still hiding in vessels some of them are old now like our father and the Lord and many other fathers and you know when the fathers lift their eyes to see they are searching is anyone discerning enough enough to realize that there are still treasures in earthen vessels the old man may not be in active ministry again but he had a covenant with God that you will never see shame and every time shame would arise that covenant will rise you can receive from that covenant one day you can meet him and say sir I have seen the grace of God upon your life 50 years in ministry no scandal no shame what grace what do you have to tell me and what impartation will come upon my head and the man will tell you when I was a young man I met one prophet or a man of God who has gone to be with the Lord he spoke to me and blessed me and you say please can you transfer that grace upon me and with one prayer in the presence of honor receiving from the body of Christ you will add to your space graces that were not in your personal dealing with God I read in my Bible that I shall be exalted above every nation of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me from my background i did not see many people who carried this grace for influence so i had to search with hunger first from scripture and then through the materials of people with proven track records i found one of them the man miles monroe i sought that grace with hunger and with honor the day the grace landed i knew it landed You don't just stand before kings and nobles because you are anointed. No. The grace on you defines what comes to you. Are we together? I knew that if I was to walk in the authenticity of my call, I would need to speak to people beyond members of a church. 
I would need to speak to powers that be. I would need to speak to captains of industry. But you need the grace that elevates you to that position. That grace was not in my initial experience. But being that it was within the body of Christ, honor attracted it to my life. And I'm, I'm thankful to God for his mercy. Someone came tonight to receive something that may not be within the frame of your work with God, but your ministry and this season of your life desperately needs that grace. Desperately. You've been running your business and losing and failing. Stop trying. There is a grace and there is wisdom connected to that grace that can give you rest. I was very honored at the bishop who gave the testimony before I came here. Very, very profound. And you would think because I was the one who God used, I see these things every day and all the time, but I confess to you that I never get familiar with this. Sometimes I wonder myself that just one declaration, but is it really just one declaration? No. no. Be blessed. And the person just says, Amen. And that's it. And that Amen you just heard is beyond just the words of a man. It is grace flowing through words. Resting with no particular individual. Whoever opens his heart becomes the recipient of that grace. Hallelujah. I'm a product of many graces. I have profound honor for the investment that God placed within his body. I covenanted with God in prayers and tears that I will never meet anyone twice for that person to be blessed no that if I encounter you once in the name of the Lord something must happen in your life we're about to pray I hope I've not bored you tonight because I'm going to be requesting that we hold hands and pray for five minutes and then I'll minister for another five or ten minutes and then we're done the reason why you are holding hands now you know if you can rise, let me please request that you rise. You are not just looking unto me. Ultimately, we are looking unto Jesus. But once you are praying in the spirit for the next five minutes, what you are saying is, Lord, what grace did you place upon the man by my left and the man by my right? Even if it's your husband, even if it's your wife, this is, this is a spirit thing. What grace? Have you placed upon that individual? I open up my heart and I receive. I receive with humility the investment of the spirit, a representation of years of pain, covenants, dealings. I receive by faith. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. For a businessman, you are stepping into your season. For a man of God, you are stepping into your season. Graces are abundantly available. Available within the body. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many, many ministries. Many sincere believers, limited because they've not tapped into the supply that is within the body absent in your life but available within the body take a moment and pray cry from the depth of your heart pastors pray leaders pray politicians pray Please pray. Let the fire fall. Let the river flow. Let it burn inside. Let it flow outside. Let the fire fall. Let the river flow. Let it burn inside. Let it flow outside. Let the fire fall, let the river flow, let it burn inside, let it flow outside, let the fire fall, 
let the river flow let it burn inside one more time let the fire fall let the river flow let it burn inside let it flow outside let the fire fall let the river flow Please look at me. How many of you believe that the healing grace is still in the body of Christ? Genuine, authentic, apostolic healing mantles. Yes, sir. May not be in my life. May not be in your life. You may be saying, but it's still within the body. How many of you know that within the body is the investment of the spirit of wisdom? Men like God's wisdom of the ancient trapped in earthen vessels there are men and women who have accessed the grace for wealth authentic prosperity genuine wealth doesn't matter what nation they have mastered the art of opening the two lead gates of nations not in my life but available within the body and that through honor through discernment you can receive you're going to pray a prayer father every grace that is upon this ground that came by God came by God through Christ and is not at work in my life I open up my spirit to receive go ahead and pray not just from Joshua Selman not just from the ministers that have come or the ministers that will be coming maybe from your neighbor maybe from your spouse maybe from your colleague every grace available for my wholesome victory for my efficiency within the body authentic genuine grace that is not at work in my life i open up my heart Someone take a minute to pray. Shaleka pereka tos kabranda katosh. Ekra pata leka perede geteba leka tos. Grace, you've been trying to build. Here is a Nehemiah anointing within this space. Can you open up your hand to receive? You've been trying to last long in ministry, but you are up today, down tomorrow. Here are fathers within this place, testaments of endurance, that you can do ministry with purity, do ministry with sincerity. Pray. The prayerlessness can come to an end. God has already invested grace. There are careers of the spirit of prayer and supplication. It can be deposited tonight, this moment in your life. Someone pray. Someone pray. You are a man of God and your church is not growing. Stop giving flimsy excuses. There are people who have gone to strange lands and God honored them there. Gave them the nation for their possession. Pray every grace that is available in Christ deposited within the body of Christ needed for my life needed for my rising needed for my excelling I open up my spirit to receive in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray listen please listen to me listen to me do you know why many speakers many vessels were called upon by God's servant to come and serve the word because they are hosts of many unique graces 
many grace combinations faith and wisdom for someone favor and wisdom is like is like spiritual combinations and God brings them together including the people now attending the meeting not just the ones privileged to minister here hallelujah please hear me there are some of you here there are songs you've written and if the grace required comes upon you the nations will be singing those songs but although those songs have come from the altar the grace for visibility is not on you so no one can hear what you carry and yet they are powerful songs keep praying but you need to access authentic grace that gives you visibility so that the investment of God's grace upon your life will be heard across the continent. Can I give you one more prayer? One more prayer. Listen to me. I want you to look at every area of your life, your ministry, your business. How do you know the grace that is deficient by the results and the testimonies that are absent? Man of God, you have tremendous grace for teaching but there is no backing this is the reason why although you are a great teacher the truth is that there is no performance to the word don't argue away and say well I'm not called into the miracle ministry nobody is called into the miracle ministry we are called to represent Jesus the miraculous is part of the forces that gives witness to his being alive so rather than giving a flimsy excuse and say, well, I think it's just my thing. It's a lie. It's a lie. Contend. It's an add to your faith virtue. You can add to what is already there. Father, give witness to my speakings. Let me no longer be an empty preacher. Just making noise on stage. But that as I speak, there be a performance. And someone will say, you taught on this. You taught on that. And grace came. And I took what you said, I applied it, and it changed my life. Can I give you that one prayer? Mention the area in your life where you are yet to see genuine results, a signature of God's grace. Cry in the next one minute. Father, the grace responsible for this result, I open up my heart to receive it. Go ahead, Kenya. Body of Christ, pray. Those following online, pray. For every dimension of spiritual reality, there are graces that sponsor those outcomes. There are graces that sponsor those outcomes. The unity of the body affords us an opportunity to drink from the investments of the spirit upon one another, to drink from the sacrifices, to drink from our covenants with God. hallelujah hallelujah I know what I'll do I'll reserve the ministrations for tomorrow so that we can have the time to go and rest so rather than ministering I'll give us one more prayer and then we'll prepare our hearts. Tomorrow we'll have the time to minister to the sick, to speak over your life, to pray over the nation, and to release graces. We have to walk with the time. The spirit of a prophet, the Bible says, is subject to the prophet. And so, I'll give us one more prayer. It's a prayer that I prayed many years in my life. Many years ago. I still pray that prayer up until now. Please listen to me. This one grace you have to pray. That everything called pride and every manifestation of vain glory that can stop you from accessing graces because you see the Bible says God one of the secrets of the multiplication of grace is humility God opposes the proud you know what pride is acting as though without God you are still sufficient the Bible says not that we are sufficient in ourselves. It is one thing I have fought in my life. I cry to God all the time. Cut away from me 
any tendency for pride it's a human thing as you are lifted and as God begins to lift you chances are excellent the number one reason I did not have the time to teach you why most people in the body cannot receive from one another is pride pride there are many pride why should I receive from this brother who does not have a name I don't know him I don't see his face on social media and we carry our arrogance and recycle season of pain you're going to pray the humility ask the Lord to walk upon your heart with all due respect especially we servants of God you know the tendency for pride is in us everybody's calling you daddy mommy yes sir and you are deserving of that honor sometimes that thing can get into our heads to a point that we forget that we are not sufficient in ourselves our sufficiency truly is of God who has made us able ministers you are going to pray against this cancer of pride and if for any reason you found yourself walking in pride alongside any other thing pride lust vain glory don't be ashamed this is what 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 discussing discerning receiving the Bible says you can receive from the body unworthily there are many young people God is already beginning to use you the prophetic is there truly there is a formation of the apostolic but your one cancer is that pride you've not even started the journey and yet nobody can talk to you you know everything you've seen Jesus you see everybody I love you my dear brother but so that you would not die before the journey starts there is a nobler way is the way of humility there are many of us who have had obvious results but in the presence of obvious results pride pride it's a prayer I pray for myself all the time there are businessmen who have been limited because it is God's hand that is limiting you when God's hand is fighting you the anointing cannot help you because the anointing was not designed to fight God the anointing only fights what is anti-Christ and if it is God himself opposing you the only prayer that bails you out is a prayer of mercy pride I have watched it turn people from grace to grass hallelujah before I came here was one of my prayers as I was praying I said Lord please help the heart of this your son the journey is still far take away all the tendencies Apostle Joshua Selman when I entered here you honored me and I appreciate it I do but I'm sure some young man somewhere is looking and you know wishing this is the kind of applause I want yes before you destroy yourself let me speak to you very quickly honor is a noble thing it's in your destiny but cut away pride cut away pride this know-it-all mentality is the way of fools cut it away I hope you like this prayer request I'm still telling you the prayer request you look at fathers and ignore them thinking they don't have that what does this man have to say he doesn't see visions I see visions I prophesy he doesn't mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. remember Lucifer Lucifer is an eternal lesson a memorial on the danger of pride we're going to take the next one minute since I'm not ministering again please pray if this is all you achieve tonight then you have prepared yourself to receive pride you're a man of God and it's eaten deep into you. You've created systems around your life to massage your ego to a point that you cannot see truth again. You've been blinded by the psychophancy of men. I don't know why God is bringing this angle to wrap up this service, but it's time to cry. This work is about Jesus. Whether in ministry or in business, the central focus is not Joshua Selman. It's not Reverend Kula. It's not anyone who has come here. Apostle Grace Lubega, the man of God, great apostle from uh, Switzerland, Pastor Poju. These are great vessels, but you must look beyond them and see that there is only one who deserves to be lifted and exalted. And if for any reason you have built a monument around your life, my dear brother and sister in the gospel, if for any reason you have built a monument around your life, my dear businessman, just know that you have set up yourself for destruction. It is never too late to repent. 
Tonight can be your time of repentance. Can I give you one minute to raise that cry? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've given you the prayer point. Cry to your maker. Help my heart. Purge my heart. That which has stopped me from receiving from the body. I may feel I'm better than every other person. Better than every other man of God. Better than every other worshiper. Better than every other businessman. Better than every other student. That, that mentality. There is a positive superiority mentality. But there is a destructive superiority mentality. Go ahead and pray. Allow the spirit in the next one minute to do that portion within your heart. To walk upon your heart. Bring you to a point where you are broken to the place of humility. Then you will access grace. You will access power. Genuine apostolic power. The power to heal. God can trust you with the destiny of millions across the nations. Because he knows that you hold within yourself a disposition of humility take a minute and pray take a minute and pray take a minute and pray oh lord be magnified take a minute to pray man of god i don't doubt the grace of god upon your life genuinely called genuinely anointed but watch pride it's about to sink you down sink you down sink you down and for some of you while you are pointing at others it may be that heaven is pointing at you and saying, forget about others and walk on yourself walk on yourself walk on yourself walk on yourself no one has made you a, 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 what they call it now a, a referee over others walk on your own pride walk on your own self Focus on your own becoming. That's how you become a blessing. Lord, restore humility to the church in Africa. There is a lot of pride. This is why there is no sharing together of graces. Sometimes arrogance even when there is no result. Let's pray. Here is a man standing with the Nehemiah anointing. A builder for the kingdom exploits for the kingdom but there are many people who desire this realm but will not humble themselves to admit that they need it there are politicians graced by god and others will not receive from them there are fathers graced by god please take a minute let the holy spirit break that pride as we wrap up Search my heart, try my thoughts. Search my heart, try my thoughts. In the name of Jesus, when you go back home tonight, I want you to pray this prayer. Pray this prayer. The grace that has made me belittle other men of God, other people, belittle my spouse belittle fathers of faith belittle other people who God is using and if you are here and God has shown you mercy and has elevated you to a point the grace to not look down on others whilst they are coming knowing that they also carry grace even though they are in the making those who have experience in ministry be careful what you say about those starting they may make mistakes but they are still anointed and some of them have answers to the question you could not answer. Respect their dealing. Can I make an altar call? Kenya, please look at me. I made up my mind that for the rest of my life until I see his face, I will be a point of contact first to as many who need Jesus. This is my life assignment beyond teaching the body helping people to know Jesus I'm a testament of what Jesus can do to a life he's changed my life I want to make an altar call there are tens of thousands of people in this place for someone you came here 
and whilst hearing me teach from the first encounter you know that you've not made it right with Jesus we're in the days of his power there's no playing games again one leg in one leg out I'm not asking you how many days you've spent in church I'm not even asking you if you have a Christian name or born from a Christian family you may be a sincere person you've tried you've done everything you know to do oh we do not condemn you but there is a family that needs you tonight God's own family I'm going to count one to five for sake of time now once the front here gets filled every other person who is coming you'll be required to stay where you are I know that there are people from the farthest distances who are saying apostle if you will give me a chance to make it right with Jesus I will come running I want to give you that opportunity as I count one to five please leave your seat and come and stand right in front of me here the moment the front is filled I will politely request that you remain where you are but begin to run come to Jesus we love you and we receive you in the name of Jesus who is coming to Jesus tonight come please let them come just manage them just manage them so that manage them show them the way someone just lead them and show them the way so they don't hurt themselves come let's celebrate them as they come two come Kenya let's celebrate salvation come win that war finally I will not be silent. Come, I will. Oh, don't kneel, please stand so that others can, can have a bit of space. As long as, as long as I am breathing, I Start everybody if you can. Please start so that there will be more space. Come. Three. You're running to Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. He calls you for a new beginning tonight. Calls you to make it right with Him. As long as I am breathing, Time. And I will, and I will not, not be silent. I will always worship you as long. Listen, let me encourage ministers of the gospel. Please keep coming if you're coming. Please, let us take the business of evangelism and soul winning serious. Preach well. Lay hands on the sick. Minister deliverance. But give people an opportunity to meet Jesus. Yes, sir. Don't be afraid and embarrassed to say, will anybody come? That's not your concern. Yours is to give people an opportunity. We have a generation that desperately needs Jesus. Being in church does not equal salvation. I'm about to make that prayer. If you're joining them, please come quickly. Once the front is filled, then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. Lend me a minute or two more. We have to do this. This is about the noblest experience in this program tonight. An opportunity for these many to encounter Jesus the son of the living God not another Jesus the one who died and rose again the one who can turn any life to a sign and a wonder 
please look at me those of you who are in front some of you are crying I want you to know that I love you with all my heart and I thank God for your life thank you for making this noble decision some of you came right from behind I saw you running you were tired but you did not stop thank you the Bible says as many who will come to him it says he will in no wise cast away you have come because rebels don't come to Jesus they run away from him so the fact that you have come is proof that you are not a rebel it doesn't matter how dark your life has been my beloved people he's able to give you a new story a new beginning even right now and let me speak to someone who is watching by television here at Rema Fest you're watching by internet you're watching by television this is the altar call and this is an opportunity for someone to know Jesus genuinely and truly as I lead these precious ones in prayer you may join in your home your office or perhaps you are watching by rebroadcast the Lord is giving you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus even right now are you glad for what God is doing in Kenya glory to Jesus now my brothers and sisters let me request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender say this after me as loud and as clear as you are, you can you're not reciting a poem Jesus is here say after me Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word I, heard your word. I, believe, I believe that you are the Son of God, son of God. I, believe I believe that you died for my sin I, for my sin. I, believe, I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I am a child of God from tonight I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your beautiful hands lifted and I pray for you father your word declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away these precious ones have come declaring your lordship over their lives I decree and declare by the integrity of God's word I declare your sins forgiven and I call you from tonight bona fide recipients of the life of God I pray for you from the depth of my heart that the grace to live the victorious Christian life help those under the anointing let that grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus and that everything that is not of God around your life now I'm seeing two people I command that spirit to live now out of their lives by the power of the Holy Spirit they have declared the Lordship of Christ and you have no stay over their life I decree and declare be gone forever by the power that raised Christ from the dead I bring you life I bring you deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen okay here's what I want you to do I'm going to request that you gently without marching on one another you return back to your seats rejoicing you have received Jesus if for any reason a call okay hold on hold on hold on I understand there. okay there's a place for them all right all of you please together in concert I will request that you move to my right I think there's confusion somewhere here I see hands lifted help me someone give me the right direction okay this way there are counselors there please look to my right so all of you move to my right that will be your left and you have the counselors they will have a word with you in a minute or two and then you return to your seat let's honor them as they go God bless you come on Kenya celebrate salvation celebrate salvation celebrate salvation celebrate salvation celebrate salvation hallelujah now let me make a request very quickly we're out of time um, we'll save the ministrations the impartations and all else we have to do by the Spirit for tomorrow um, and then we'll take the time to do that and at the permission of the angel over this house and over this conference if I have his liberty I want to plead that everyone comes with a prayer request tomorrow will that be fine how many of you believe in answered prayers 
all right so here's what we'll do when you are coming for the evening session as many of you please make sure you take the time write out the things you are trusting the lord to do in your life and all the things that have caused you pain all the things that have seemed to discourage you spiritually you're trusting god for a miracle maybe for yourself a son sickness whatever it is what i want you to do is you write them down in the course of the service tomorrow night we'll collate them no matter how many in fact maybe i would request that the ushers have a system so that whilst people come they can submit the request i think it makes it very easy and then that way we'll be able to collate it and pray in the course of the service i bless you in the name of jesus may the hand of god rest upon you you return tomorrow rejoicing in jesus name we pray give jesus a big hand clap Here are 10 reasons why people pray. Equal connection with the divine. Prayer is a way to connect with a higher power, expressing devotion, reverence, and a desire for a relationship with God or the divine. 2. Seeking guidance. Many people pray to seek wisdom, clarity, and direction in their lives, asking for help in making decisions or understanding difficult situations. 3. Comfort and peace. Prayer can provide comfort during times of distress, offering a sense of peace and reassurance that one is not alone in their struggles. For gratitude, prayer is a way to express thankfulness for the blessings and good things in life, acknowledging the positive aspects of existence. 5. Intercession for others. People often pray for the well-being of others, asking for healing, protection, or blessings for family, friends, or even strangers. 6. Confession and Forgiveness Prayer provides an opportunity for self-reflection, allowing individuals to confess their wrongdoings and seek forgiveness, leading to spiritual cleansing and renewal. 7. Strength and Endurance Through prayer, individuals often seek the strength to endure difficult circumstances, asking for the resilience to face challenges. 8. Worship and Adoration Prayer is an act of worship, where individuals praise and adore the divine, celebrating the greatness and goodness of God. 9. Requesting needs. Many people pray to ask for specific needs, whether material, emotional or spiritual, believing that divine intervention can provide solutions or support. 10. Cultivating a habit of mindfulness. Regular prayer can foster mindfulness, helping individuals remain focused on their spiritual goals and maintain a sense of purpose and direction in life. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside quiet waters, He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you for liking this message. Thank you for watching this message. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. We love you. We celebrate you. Please share our content with others. Share our content with your follower, your fellow, um, what do I want to say now? Share our content with your friend, with your family, with your loved ones. Share it with your enemies. Share our content anywhere. Believers Global TV to the whole world. Let's gather and preach the gospel of Christ through the power of media. See you in our next video. Don't forget to share the love of Christ with others. And share the love of Christ with your friends, with your family, with your enemies, with your loved ones, with anybody at all. Anybody, human being at all. Share the love of Christ with them. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will, the Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And uh, what do I want to say again? Follow us on all of our social media platforms, on Facebook at Believers Global TV, on uh, Instagram at Believers Global TV, on the TikTok at Believers Global TV, on YouTube at Believers Global TV. See you. See you, see you later. Bye.